I'm Scotty Bowman, the Libertarian candidate for United States Senate. Your U.S. Senate vote is your chance to tell politicians what kind of change you really believe in. Libertarians believe in less government power and more personal freedom. If that's the direction you think our country should go in, it's time to vote your hopes and not your fears. A vote for Levin will tell him that you're pleased with what he's doing. A vote for the Republican will say that you're pleased with what George Bush is doing. It tells both of them that you are pleased with the economy and unconcerned that the government is listening to your phone calls and reading your emails. It tells them that you're pleased with that billions of dollars and thousands of lives are being thrown away on reckless crusades that ruin our image and put us at risk. A vote for a libertarian tells both major parties that it's time to restore the liberties they have taken away and respect our Constitution. And I think that's really, to me, the core issue is liberty and privacy, not new liberty or privacy that I want to see beyond what I grew up with, with just returning to the liberty and privacy we had just a few years ago. See an end to secret trials. Um, I'd like to see the, um, the, seat, the cessation of any torture at Guantanamo. Um, I'd like to see an end to warrantless wiretaps. I do not believe in granting immunity to telecommunications companies. Um, those are um, some major things I'd like to see happen. And then also um, getting troops out of Iraq as soon as possible. And of course the reason going in there was ridiculous anyhow because we went in there based upon this assumption of weapons of mass destruction that were never found. I wouldn't be shocked if a similar scenario plays its role out in Iran. Um, I don't think this is what our country should be doing. We should be protecting our own borders and um, ensuring security at home but not trying to build an empire at, um, globally by creating false um, causes for attack. So when it comes to issues of foreign policy in general, and, and you mentioned Iraq, you mentioned uh, the potential uh, further involvement in Iran, consistent then That's with the, uh, the over... Um, the European Union is fully capable of defending itself against Russia. They have the resources. If they haven't built up um, enough weaponry to be balanced, they easily could. They're advanced countries. They don't need us there. The um, Japanese they're fully capable of building up a sufficient defense for themselves. We don't need to have bases in Japan. Um, Korea, South Korea, sure they have a crazy neighbor to the north, but they're a modern country too. They're an economic competitor. They're doing great because we're subsidizing their economy by providing them with a defense. Um, once again, they should be able to take care of themselves. We don't need to be a global empire. Um, the taxpayers of this country are suffering enough as it is. Um, that to sit there and fund other countries and support foreign economies is just not something um, that is sustainable anymore in addition to it I think being a bad idea and making enemies where if you look at the um, alternatives such as um, the role Switzerland has played for instance they're a secure country they're not isolated in fact they interact quite well on the financial realm with the rest of the world but they don't have an interventionist foreign policy they have um, a foreign policy that keeps them out of other countries' military affairs as a neutral country. And I think we could do much better maybe accepting some aspects of the Swiss model as far as foreign policy goes. Income tax should be repealed. Now as far as how do we pay for other things? Well, basically the only money um, that we've had as far as increased spending since the year 2000, basically that amount of money, if we went back to 2000 spending levels, in other words, the amount of money we'd have left in the absence of the income tax would cover the remaining expenses. So I don't really see a need to continue an income tax. I'm not for the fair tax, unlike some other libertarians have come out in favor of that, because I still, I believe what would end up happening, and I saw this happen in Michigan with one of the proposal A's we had a few years back, is essentially we'd have the promise of having one tax permanently rolled back, get this other tax brought in, and then end up probably with both taxes. In about the last 30 seconds that uh, we have to, to sum up your beliefs and your positions and what would be the message you would leave with the voters uh, as they get set to go to the polls in asking for their vote. Well, one thing I would say is if you disapprove 
of the fact that your Senator, Carl Levin, has voted to spend your tax dollars to help bail out wealthy Wall Street investors and bankers, then I suggest voting for Scotty Bowman, because that'll be, send a clear message that you're voting for somebody who thinks differently and that you're not happy bailing out these Wall Street investment firms and bankers. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I did vote for TARP. All right. Uh, you know, every day I'm in Washington, I face love, not every day. Some days you face a really tough vote. It needed to be done. It has now, you know, parts of it have uh, worked, parts of it have not. All right, thank you. Libertarians clearly believe in less government power and more individual freedom. If that's the direction you think our country should go in, vote your hopes and not your fears. Unlike the Republicans and Democrats, Libertarians, like myself, support a non-interventionist foreign policy. I support a federal government that does not exceed the authority granted to it by the Constitution. It does not have the legal authority to override state drug laws by harassing medical marijuana patients. It does not have the authority to morph your driver's license into a national ID card. It, I oppose taxpayer bailouts of corporations and I oppose corporate subsidies. A vote for Levin will tell him that you're pleased with the work he's doing. A vote for the Republican will say you're pleased with the work President Bush is doing. It tells them that you're pleased with the economy and thrilled with the idea of strangers listening to your phone calls and reading your emails. It tells them that you're happy to see billions of dollars and thousands of lives thrown away on reckless crusades. A Peace with Justice Network gathered outside the federal building downtown to send their message. They're against sending 30,000 more troops to Afghanistan. Basically, we should be treating the um, sorry Al Qaeda as a criminal organization and be going after international criminals and not working on nation building in a foreign country. Well, um, one of the big issues that has motivated me to become involved in the campaign for Secretary of State is that within 30 days after taking office, the next Secretary of State must decide whether or not Michigan will be enrolled in the Real ID Act. Um, and I um, deeply oppose the Real ID Act. What it is is an effort to convert the Michigan driver's license into a de facto national ID card. It would still say Michigan on it, but it would really be a national ID card with all your information going into a national database that would actually be shared internationally as a result of the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. So that's one of my big motivators. Another thing is the fact that even if um, really, you know, once I succeed in getting the spotlight on this issue, um, even if the next Secretary of State simply rejects the Real ID Act, there's still a danger of copycat laws going through. There's already something called the PASS Act that's been tossed about on Capitol Hill that they're trying to come up with an alternative since a lot of states have opted out of the Real ID Act. Um, there's efforts, for instance, um, already in place where they put the RFID chip optionally in what they call an enhanced driver's license. And one of the big selling points of that is that they say, well, you can use that as a passport. Well, my answer to that is, well, you can use a passport as a passport. You can also use a passport card as a passport, which in effect is a real national ID card that one can choose to have for travel purposes. But as far as traveling around the state and going to and from work, I don't feel like I should be tracked by an RFID chip in my um, wallet everywhere I go. If I travel internationally, I guess I'm giving up a bit of liberty when I go to another country anyway. So it was, it was proposed by the current Secretary of State, Terry Lynn Land. It was used as a template uh, for uh, a national identification card. Uh, so what you're saying is that if uh, in 30 days after the election, even a regular driver's license will have this chip in it where we can all be tracked? Uh, you uh, actually were affiliated with the ACLU, uh, and it would sound like it from your argument there, but you were at odds with them over your support of the Michigan Civil Rights Initiative. Tell us how all that came down. Well, I see you've done some, a little bit of research. Well, Scotty uh, Bowman, come on. I had to know all about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was, uh, the affiliation was strictly membership. Um, I, they never um, 
welcomed me on their boards or anything <laughs> like that. I had no official capacity. Though I did, I, I was a guest speaker at one of their panels a long time ago. Um, and interestingly enough, it was on a similar topic, and they were looking for someone to speak in opposition to some aspects of the Elliot Larson Civil Rights Act. And I disagree with the parts that apply to private businesses, um, because I think private businesses should be able to decide um, who they um, who they interact with, even if their reasons are completely flawed. And I think all discrimination is completely flawed. Um, and for the same reason that I think all discrimination is completely flawed, I opposed them on the Michigan Civil Rights Initiative because um, it was simply a ballot initiative to change the state constitution to end state-sponsored racial, sexual, and ethnic discrimination. That's what it was. And the fact that they, you know, claiming they're for civil liberties, would turn around and support the institutionalized racism effectively, institutionalized sexism, institutionalized, um, well, I don't know if nationalism is the right word, ethnicityism, um, strikes me as obscene and counter to the reason anyone that I would think would be interested in their organization would want to join. Every man toward his own agenda, but they dance around some key issues, like fixing the economy. I'm willing to, to put as a committed contract that I will not raise taxes under any circumstances. And libertarian turned Republican Scotty Bowman says he's hopeful to make the cut. So I anticipate that I will. I'm tr still in the process of trying to gather up all of them. I'm Scotty Bowman, and I approve this message.